Design Patterns Notoriously hard to learn. Every software engineer that I've met dreads them. Perhaps that's why they remain popular in interviews. The interviewers use design patterns to tease the interviewees or brutally draw out some sweat. What do we do after the interviews? We thank God that the interview is over and then forget all about design patterns. Developers rarely make a conscious effort to learn them outside of preparing for interviews. Missing out on design patterns while writing code is like reinventing the wheel in ways that are more worse than better. Despite the hype surrounding design patterns, they aren't actually that difficult to learn. In my opinion, most top sites appearing on Google results just do a poor job of explaining them. The material offered is either too academic or just badly explained. Because of this, design patterns remain one of the most misunderstood and underappreciated concepts. Headfirst Design Patterns is a book that aims to change that in a big way. Headfirst is a series of books by O'Reilly where the authors approach teaching a concept through storytelling and fundamental dissection or exploring the why before explaining the what. To the best of my knowledge, the series was started by Cathy Sierra and Bert Bates with their head first Java. Any Java developer would know these two authors. If there ever were a hall of fame for Java instructors, they would probably be at the very top. Taking the learning should be fun tradition forward is the book Head First Design Patterns by Eric Freeman and Elizabeth Robson. The book's preface explains the style rest of the book follows, so don't miss it. Each chapter tells a unique story of a specific software engineering problem set in the fictional world of Objectwell. Every story has its set of characters, some that are part of the problem and others are software engineers like us, each with a different perspective of the problem who want to solve it in the best possible way. The engineers first try and solve the problem with a first reaction approach until they land into scalability or maintainability traps. The authors then introduce one or more design patterns to tackle the problem at hand more elegantly. In short, each chapter feels like watching an episode in a nice TV series. That's how entertaining it is. The only difference is that the book's episodes provide benefits beyond plain entertainment. I sometimes found it hard to put down the book before finishing a chapter, but forced myself to complete it over a few days to allow time to comprehend the intricacies. Embedded in the fascinating stories are elements to further cement in your mind the concepts you just learned. For example, there are fireside chats where two similar design patterns argue about their differences and like cocky debaters try to establish their superiority over the other. The class diagrams let you visualize the relationships and connections among the classes and methods involved in a design pattern. Scribbled in handwritten font next to each class is its explanation in super simple English. And then there's the patterns guru. She's a Zen master of the software world and seems to have achieved enlightenment through her vast design and engineering experience. I kind of likened her to the character, the Oracle, in the Matrix movie series. Who are you? I'm the Oracle. Sometimes a design pattern's explanation will go against your common sense. This is when we see the student approach his guru with obvious confusion only to be reminded by her to think more deeply and from all angles. We also occasionally encounter something called a design principle. This is a tried and tested software engineering best practice that a given design pattern brings to life. The book covers a total of nine such principles. At the end of each chapter, we see a list of all design principles learned so far 
This is a good way to recap new principles and unforget the old ones. Also recapped at the end of a chapter is a bullet point summary of that chapter. I found these to be really, really helpful. If I were to revisit the book, each chapter's bullet points would be my first stop. And finally, we have exercises. Lots and lots of them. Unlike many other books, these exercises are actually fun to do and hard to miss. I highly recommend the readers attempt them and cross-check their solutions at the end. Usually, a technical book must be complemented with code practice. However, the author's use of ample and deliberate repetition may obviate the need to try each example in code. Plus, attempting all exercises will further remove the need to code practice every class diagram. After reading the whole book, I can wholeheartedly appreciate the hard work that went into writing this masterpiece. It takes skill and patience to make a topic this difficult, so easy to learn without sacrificing practicality and real worldliness. I think the main takeaway is this. Design patterns are best learned with practice and experience. With design patterns, there aren't any shortcuts. So when you learn them, try and spot the patterns in an existing code base. This can be done at work or by diving into a reputed open source product. In fact, you may already be using them unconsciously. For example, that cool trick you learned from a colleague to solve a specific repeating problem may just be a design pattern. Once you get good at spotting them in the wild, you can then deliberately look for opportunities to use them. It's always best to consult a senior or architect on your team rather than blindly fitting a pattern in your code. You see, using design patterns unwisely may create new problems rather than fixing existing ones. So just grab a copy and put it on your bookshelf. This is one book you will regret not having had before. Happy reading and until next time, adios.